Tyrese Halliburton is much better than a lot of people think. Ever since Tyrese was traded to the Indiana Pacers in that shocking trade, Tyrese has been absolutely going off. In his 13 games played with the Pacers, Tyrese is averaging around 20 points per game on 51% shooting, 4.5 rebounds, and 9.5 assists. Just incredible numbers. But quickly before we get the video started, for those of you who may not know, I'm Juicy Sports, I make opinionated NBA content, and if you guys enjoy videos similar to this, hit that subscribe button, that like button and that post notification bell but anyways let's get into it Tyrese Halliburton was drafted with the number 12 overall selection in the 2020 NBA draft by the Sacramento Kings. And going into the draft, a ton of teams knew Tyrese had a ton of talent, but there were some concerns about his game. Teams weren't necessarily sure how well his offensive game would translate to the next level, and especially his three-point jump shot, along with some other concerns, but of course the main concern was his offensive game. And for those reasons, he fell all the way down to the number 12 overall selection. But once Tyrese actually got into the NBA, he played extremely well well right out of the gate. In his rookie season, he averaged 13 points on 47% shooting, 3 rebounds, and also adding 5.3 assists. Now those numbers don't necessarily completely jump out to you, but at the same time they are solid numbers, but when you actually watch Tyrese out there on the court, you can clearly tell he was playing very, very good basketball. And it was pretty clear early on that the Sacramento Kings got an absolute steal in Tyrese with the number 12 overall selection. Basically all the concerns that NBA scouts had about Tyrese going into the draft, Tyrese was able to prove them all wrong pretty early on into his rookie season. The biggest issue in terms of Tyrese's three-point jump shot, he was able to completely silence. In his rookie season, Tyrese not only shot a good percentage from three, he shot a fantastic percentage. He shot almost 41% from deep, which is absolutely elite. And the fact that a lot of NBA scouts were concerned about his three-point jump shot, and the fact that he was not only shooting a good percentage, he was shooting an elite percentage was crazy. But besides just his fantastic three-point shooting in his rookie season, Tyrese also showed the ability to finish around the basket pretty effectively with crafty layups either his left or right hand and overall showed a great ability to get to the basket had a decent mid-range jump shot as well had a nice floater within his game Tyrese also showed the ability to effectively run an NBA offense at times in his rookie season and overall just showed a very good basketball IQ which is extremely important as we all know for an NBA level point guard especially a starting level or maybe even a star level point guard but although there were some concerns about his offensive game overall Tyrese early on into his rookie season Season, proved all those people wrong. In Tyrese's second season with the Sacramento Kings, he bumped up all his numbers across the board for the most part compared to his rookie season. This season for the Kings, Tyrese was averaging around 15 points per game on 45% shooting, 4 rebounds, and also adding 7 assists to his game. But even besides the numbers, it was pretty clear in his second season with the Kings that Tyrese improved almost every aspect of his game. Tyrese especially proved the ability to run an NBA offense consistently. In his rookie season, he certainly showed some flashes, but wasn't necessarily doing it that consistently, but in his second season, he clearly proved the ability to do it on a consistent level. He also improved his scoring ability as well, even though it was pretty good in his rookie season. He had some crazy scoring games for the Kings in his second season, and overall, Tyrese just looked like an improved player in year two with the Kings than he did in year one. But once Tyrese got traded to the Indiana Pacers, that's where everything changed for him. As I mentioned before in the video, once Tyrese was traded from the Kings to the Pacers, the entire NBA world was completely in shock because the Sacramento Kings Kings were trading away a very talented and very promising young point guard on a rookie deal, which is something that you typically don't see happening. And especially due to the fact that they had a guy in Darren Fox who was certainly a very good player, but he was on a very big contract, and a lot of people thought that Tyrese could potentially be a better player than De'Aaron Fox is long term. A lot of teams expected the Kings to trade De'Aaron Fox if they were going to move on from one of their point guards. But even though people were very high on Tyrese in Sacramento, I don't necessarily think people expected Tyrese to be as good as he is currently, or at least this quickly with the Indiana Pacers. In Sacramento, as I mentioned, Tyrese was certainly seen as a very, very talented young player that had the potential to be a star long term, but ever since he's gotten to Indiana, based upon the numbers that he's put up, it's kind of hard to argue that he's not turning into a star right now. The complete package that Tyrese is providing for the Pacers this season is absolutely phenomenal. Of course, he has all the same skills that he did in Sacramento in terms of a fantastic three-point shot, does pretty well in the mid-range as well, fantastic ability 
ability to drive all the way to the basket. But he does all those things that I mentioned at a higher level in Indiana. But on top of that, he's running the offense very, very well in Indiana as well. He's sharing the load a little bit with a guy in Malcolm Brogdon. But overall, Tyrese has certainly shown the ability to run the offense at a very high level due to his very high basketball IQ. But of course, besides his offense, he's also great defensively, as we all know, and as I mentioned before. And overall, the entire package that Tyrese is providing to Indiana is certainly something I don't necessarily think people expected this quickly from him. But now, what are my personal expectations for Tyrese long term? So it's pretty clear at this point that Tyrese is ahead of schedule, and currently at this point, as I mentioned, he's playing close to, or if not, at a star level. Now, long term, I would expect Tyrese to continue to improve his overall game, like he did from year one to year two, and like he did from Sacramento to Indiana. Now, of course, I'm not expecting him to show a humongous jump like he did from Sacramento this season to Indiana, but I would just expect him to slowly improve some aspects of his game. I would like to see him add some different moves into his offensive game, because right now, I would say Tyrese is certainly a three-level scorer, but at the same time, there's always refinements that could be made and take him to maybe that 24, 25 points per game type score. Unefficient shooting as well, of course. Maybe eventually he could add a nice little post turnaround fadeaway within his game. Maybe he can add some other different moves to just get him open a little bit more. And overall, when the defense starts to focus on him a little bit, he would have some more moves in his bag to really still be able to score at a high level. And overall from Tyrese long term, I easily could see him as a mid-level all-star and maybe even a little bit higher, who knows. But I just really value the type of play that he provides. And it's just the biggest thing long term for me that I would like to see is just refinement long term. But now let's talk about my expectations for the Indiana Pacers long term. So before the Tyrese Halliburton trade, I probably would have said the Pacers need to trade everybody and just get draft picks and blow everything up. But at this point, when you look at the roster, they actually have a few nice young players on the roster. Of course, they have Tyrese. On top of that, they have Buddy Heald, which in my opinion is a pretty underrated player. He does have a decently sized contract, so I guess you have to see about that. Chris Duarte, who in my opinion is a very talented and very underrated young player. Miles Turner is a really good player as well. Malcolm Brogdon, of course, I like him. Jalen Smith, I think he's pretty underrated. And overall, I would say they have a pretty talented young team at this point. But more importantly than anything else, if the Pacers want to see success long term, they need to nail two main factors. So the first factor and most important factor that the Pacers need to accomplish would be drafting effectively. I mentioned this in some of my videos, but the most important thing that you can do as an organization is draft effectively. And if the Pacers are able to draft effectively to put some nice young talent next to the players that they already have on their roster and build upon that nice young core that they have, in my opinion, I think they'll have a lot of success going forward. But if they're not able to draft effectively, I think they still have some nice young players, but it's certainly not going to help them long term. So drafting effectively is certainly going to be the most important thing going forward long term for the Pacers. But another factor that's a little overlooked, but in my opinion is pretty important, is also free agency. The Pacers need to do a fantastic job at not only bringing in some nice veterans to complement the young players that they have on the roster already, but get the right type of guys. If they're able to do both of those things very effectively, I think the Pacers have a very bright future going forward. But long term, we'll see what happens not only with Tyrese Halliburton, but also the Indiana Pacers. But I'm very excited for both sides. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think Tyrese Halliburton has a very bright future going forward, or do you not think so? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did enjoy, check one of these two videos popping up now. And until the next time, peace out, guys.